Today we're going to review two Jackery products that were sent in for review. The first one is the Jackery Solar Saga 200 solar panel. And then the second one is the Jackery Power Station. So this is the 1000 V2. So we're going to unbox them. We're going to look at the specs, put them through their paces, and see if they're any good. Let's begin. All right, so inside the box, you get a nice uh, power cable. So, of course, it's orange to, uh, to match the colors for, uh, for Jackery. It is a pretty thick cable and looks like that you can uh, scan it toward a replacement. So we'll put this off to the side. It does come with your manuals as well. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. So the manual is pretty complete. It's got a lot of good things in here. So I'm going to go through some of the features that are on the front. So you do have a 30 watt USB-C connection. Then you have a 100 watt version of it right below. And then um, your standard uh, USB uh, 3 connection, which is good for 18 watts. You have three power outputs on it, three uh, outlets that is. Uh, they are pure sine wave. Uh, it is 1500 watts is what it's capable of putting out. One thing that I do like on this is the actual light on it. We'll get into that in just a moment. And the screen works pretty good as well. Uh, it does have a pretty nice app on it. One thing that I do like about this model, and not all the different power stations that I have have this feature, but you can, you can adjust how high that the uh, battery will charge up and how low it will discharge. I think you can set it for 85% and 15% for the high and low, which is good because it will help extend the life of it. All right, so let's get into the specs. So the Jackery 1000 has a 1,070 watt-hour battery. It will put out 1,500 watts continuous, 3,000 watts peak, and is good for 4,000 cycles of the battery. Now the weight is pretty good. It's under 23 pounds, so it's nice and light. Anybody can carry it. It's got a nice carry handle on it that's padded, which is definitely helpful. It has a light on the front, and I'll show you this real quick. So you press it once. This is low. Press it again. This is high. And then you have your SOS right there. You have your AC output, which turns on your three outlets. And I could hear the inverter click in. And then you also have your DC output, which are for um, the plugs here, the USB-Cs and your uh, standard USB connection. You also have your cigarette lighter, which is 12 volts, 10 amps. And um, show you on the side here. On the side, the two barrel connections that I spoke of before. So that's going to be your uh, DC-8020s. And then you have your power plug right here. So I have two of these and uh, the recommendation that I would make is move this power plug to a different spot. You can move it to another side, you can space these farther apart, but having it very, very close, what I've done a few times is I go to plug in my barrel connection and I don't have much light and I kind of miss it and I hit the plug right there and then I get a nice little spark and I pop a fuse and I've done that oh shoot probably three four times now so um, I make sure whatever I have plugged into this uh, to charge it from uh, from solar I've got uh, a 15 amp fuse and uh, yeah a couple different times I've done it so uh, I would recommend moving this either to the other side or you can take these two plugs, move them higher, say above the fan, put them up here, but don't have them this close because I keep on doing that. So that's just my recommendation on that. The other side, so you got your fan, goes through one end, out the other, and then on the back just has some simple specs. I like how everything's on the front on this, especially that light. Uh, I've used the light quite a bit. If you're going camping, um, I think you'll definitely find it useful. Or if you have a uh, 
uh, situation to where your power is out, it is definitely helpful to have that light in the front. So now we're going to uh, start testing these out. So I'm going to do some pretty, uh, pretty cool tests on it. We'll see what this inverter will put out. We'll see um, what the, uh, how clean that the output is. And I'm going to give you a demo kind of showing how that uh, the signal is actually a little bit cleaner than some of my other power stations. So stay tuned for that. I think you'll like that. I always like doing real world testing so you can see how well that something performs. Now, before I forget, let's take a look at this uh, solar panel here. So it does have some magnets that help keep it closed. It's got a couple of snaps to hold together in the middle. It has all of the specs right here. And then comes with both the instruction manual and then here is the cable. So here's these barrel ends, the barrels that I talked about. Here's the two different sizes. You can see them. It's got the adapter on it. So you could plug this into any Jackery uh, power station. Um, and then here's the other end, which plugs into the solar panel itself. Now, unfortunately, I cannot test out this panel today because it is raining right now. But maybe in a future video, we'll check this out. But it does look pretty cool. So now we're going to look at the AC sine wave. See how clean that it is? Is a better view. Perfect sine wave. Now that's going to be important because I'm going to show you something else coming up. So what we're going to do now is a real world test. So this is a 2000 watt power station. It's made by Denaner. It has one huge flaw. If the input power coming into it, the AC input is not pristinely clean, it will just cycle over and over and over again. Now, you can't plug a dirty generator into it. You actually can't plug a lot of power stations that are even pure sine wave into it. It will just keep on cycling over and over and over again. So I have this uh, Pecron amazing device, and I have this Blue Eddy. We're going to try to charge this Denaner with uh, the output of these two, and then we're going to try with the Jackery. And I think you're going to be pretty impressed with the, with the, uh, the differences. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug this in. And we'll do the Blue Eddy first. So this is the AC180P. So I'm going to power this on. It's at 91%. Let's put on the AC output. Let's see what it does. You can see it kicked on. at 76 percent it's trying to charge I don't know if you can hear this relay but it is clicking on and off you can see the screen blink so what's happening is the protection circuit is kicking in because it's uh, picking it up as a dirty signal. Now this is a pure sine wave inverter that's that's in this, but still it's not quite clean enough for the uh, for this device. And you can hear it clicking. You can see the screen keeps on blinking, and I can hear it clicking. So if you can't hear this, all right. So now let's turn this off. Let's try the peck run. Okay, 91%.
You see the screen blanking? I could hear the relay once again. It's kicking on and off. Hopefully you can hear it clicking on and off on camera. All right. So let's turn this one off. Now let's plug in the Jackery. Boom. Look at that. It's pulling in 1,213 watts now. You see it's charging. See the number going up. You can see right there, 1,209, 1,218. It's like in the output of the Jackery. The other ones, it wasn't clean enough, even though they were pure sine wave. But the Jackery is clean enough to charge this. So now I'm at 1,222. We'll leave it on for a moment, and you're going to hear these fans start to spin up as it's charging. Once again, you can hear no clicking. All right, so next let's see how well that this powers a 1,500-watt key gun. Okay, it's drawn exactly 1500 watts. So we'll leave this on for a few minutes. Let's see what it does. We'll let it go all the way down to 15%. All right, no issues at all holding 1500 watts on it. Cord got a little bit warm as expected. Next, we're going to try this Craftsman. So this is uh, four and a quarter horsepower. We'll see how the surge capability works. I don't expect it to be able to start it, but let's give it a shot. <laughs> So continuous is 1,025. I'm sure that there's a pretty decent peak trying to start this. So that's a successful test. Now let's see if it can do that while also having a heat gun on low. Okay, heat guns on low. And it was pulling just under 1,600 watts continuous. No issues there. See what happens when we put it on high. Okay. Surge capacity is phenomenal on this. So this is 1,500 watts. This pulls a little over 1,000 continuous. It has a startup, which is definitely going to be higher, and it was able to start it with this on high. It did last for a few seconds, and then it went into protection mode, as it should, but that is quite a test on the output. So all in all, I'm extremely impressed with it, which is why I already own two of these. So this will make it a third. Uh, it does have very good surge capability. It has a very, very clean uh, pure sine wave output on it. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to test the solar panel because, well, it's raining out. Um, but this does work quite well. Hopefully in a different video, I'll be able to do a capacity test on it. Like I said, my capacity tester let the smoke out. Uh, so that's pretty much it. Thanks again for watching Mike's Garage. Please check out my links below. And um, yeah, if you're interested, definitely pick one of these up. Thanks again.